So welcome to our next session now, 11 o'clock, and I'm really looking forward to, to, the, to this session because um, we have further partners with us. We have, um, we have with us Bernd Fiebiger from KUKA, Manfred Haberer from, uh, from SIG, Elmar Zimmerling, B&R, and my colleague Joachim Finke from Harting. Um, and now we would like to discuss with you um, how can seamless sensor to cloud communication be boosted? Um, I can tell you already in advance, it's a big field. It is somehow connected to what we heard earlier uh, today from Theo Steiniger, and I'm totally excited um, to listen, hopefully, most of the time, the next, the next minutes here. I would like to ask our guests uh, to introduce themselves in a, in, a, in a short manner, and I would like Manfred uh, to start. Please, Manfred. Yeah, hello, everybody. My name is Manfred Haber. I'm working in the technical industry management uh, and heading up the integration solutions team. So we are mainly responsible that uh, our sensor data comes in a smart and easy way into PLC systems, ERP systems, and IoT systems. So this is a really hot topic in the last couple of years at SIG. So uh, the data integration in the systems is really uh, one of the success and key factors in the future. Thank you, Manfred. Thank you for being with us and welcome again. Bernd, would you like to go ahead? Hello, Bernd Fiebiger. I'm with KUKA since over 20 years in the R&D department in different roles. And since about five or six years, I'm deeply involved in different topics of Industry 4.0 and OPC UA. And so I, the representative for KUKA in different organizations and the working group there. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Bernd. And it's great to have you with us. Elma, please. Yeah, hello to everyone. Elma Zimmerling. I'm German, live uh, with my wife and my children in the beautiful region of Lower Bavaria. Maybe you can also see some scene of my home office. <laughs> yeah, and um, I have been working for uh, BNR since uh, more than 20 years, or I'm at BNR for more than 20 years. And uh, in these uh, years, I had different roles, for example, starting with application. Uh, then uh, in the sales uh, and business development area. And now I'm uh, responsible for the topic of OPC UA. Um, and I'm working also uh, together with my other colleagues uh, in the OPC Foundation. And I'm very happy to be here today together with all the colleagues. Thank you. Great, Emma. Thank you. Great to have you with us. And last but not least, Joachim, I'm very happy that at least one a colleague here is able to join me on stage that I'm not totally alone here, please. Yeah, thank you, Kilian. So my name is Joachim Finke. I'm the head of product management, mainly for the network interface connectors. Um, so a component area here, um, Ethernet connectivity. And the, the interesting thing is that, that we, as a connector manufacturer, we are in touch with everybody. So we are in touch with companies doing design of Ethernet devices. We are in touch with machine builders who make um, the uh, network installers to do the, all the cabling. Um, but also with the end customers, big companies like, like, like Volkswagen, um, who operate in a complete machine park. So we, as a, as a small connector manufacturer, are healing everywhere. Thank you, Joachim. Good to, to be here. And now um, I would like to start with a kind of warm-up uh, question, I would, I would say. And, um, and um, this is like digital transformation of the industry is let's say, going on for, for a certain while. Um, and it will continue, needs to continue. This is what we learned earlier today already. And the question is, what does this mean uh, for the use and spread of, of Ethernet, of industrial Ethernet in the, in the, couple, in the next couple of, of years? Um, what, what do you think there? I, I would like to ask uh, Manfred first, a uh, short two sentence warm up what's going to happen there in this field. Yeah, I think uh, each smart sensor uh, generates valuable data, as we have heard also in the in the talks before. And of course, these informations must be easily accessible and interpretable for the consumers. Consumers like uh, we, we saw in the use cases from, from Mr. Steinegger, 
but also in, in many, many other digital solutions. And of course, for SIC as a sensor uh, supplier, we want to equip whenever possible all sensors directly to the Ethernet network and make the engineering and the data access as easy as possible for the for the consumer of the data for generating digital solutions and uh, to bring the industry a step forward uh, regarding all global targets like the sustainability, uh, carbon footprint, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And there, of course, our sensors produce valuable data, and this is for me. Uh, really a uh, motivation also to push this Ethernet technology into our sensors. Great, thank you. Bernd, your thoughts? Yeah, I think when we talk about industrial Ethernet, then we talk about using different protocols based on each Ethernet, which support our needs in factory automation or process automation. So there are different solutions or protocols in the market. And I think a breakthrough would be if we all use the same protocols with the same features in a standardized way to make it easier for our customers not to have several technologies and several engineering tools and several plugs and bring all together. I think this is just the vision of industrial Ethernet in the future. Great. Elma, um, additions to what Bernd just said? Now, Kilian, uh, we at BNR, we've had been using Ethernet technology more than 20 years. I would call us one of the pioneers introducing Ethernet technology in automation. And I think with the rise of industrial IoT and with this, uh, let's say, a greater number of participants in a network, in a machine or beyond, uh, it's absolutely mandatory to have really a very reliable uh, network. Uh, and that is Ethernet. And for us, it's indispensable, uh, a core element of our solutions and products tomorrow, but even more um, in the next uh, uh, years to come. Thank you, Emma. And last but not least, from a connectivity infrastructure standpoint, you ask him, what do you think? <coughs> I would like, I could fully, fully underline what the, the three guys um, have just explained. And we as Harting, as a company, we would like to support those companies like BNR, KUKA and SIG with the right connectivity, high performance connectivity, cost efficient connectivity um, in order to go the next step during the next couple of years. Great. So let's dive a little bit deeper, but start, let's say, from the top uh, um, before entering the field, field level. Almost all industrial companies um, are working on new digital services or even trying to implement digital business models. This is um, exactly what we just heard um, from, the, from, the, uh, um, from the CEO of Aerium, Dr. Steiniger. Um, but we also learned so many, so many projects are failed. Yeah? And why are they failing? What are your thoughts? The, the machines or the robots, everything is like relatively packed with sensors. And I don't really believe that all the sensors uh, Manfred is bringing to the market are measuring wrong data. I, I, I have a high trust that they are measuring right. But what's happening and what's needed to get this data in a better condition uh, to really implement Industry 4.0? Yeah, I think just the former years, the hype was industrial 4.0 and digitalization and data is the big oil. A lot of people started collecting data, but it's just always the problem uh, to recognize if it's the right data and so on. And as I heard Theo pointed out that OPC UA is just a standard which includes additionally to the protocols, some other features like the semantics to describe the values that OPC UA just provides timestamps. And typically in the converged networks, I will have synchronized system or I have a time synchronization inside so I can bring all the data in reference. And so OPC UA provides a lot of features to describe values very good with attributes for a valid value with engineering unit and ranges. So there is 
just a lot out of the box. And furthermore, OPC UA provides secure, secure mechanisms to access the data because we talk about data and not everybody should have access to all this data. And so in my future, OPC UA brings a lot out of the box and it can provide data with a very high quality and in a secure way. Great. Elmar, additions from, let's say, a motion control, PLC control company point of view? First of all, I fully underline what, what Bernd uh, mentioned or explained. And uh, I would point to another aspect uh, which comes with the, the field level. Um, we have an increasingly important uh, data source uh, which comes from all these field devices. We have complex motion devices. We have uh, uh, functional safety. We have remote I.O. So we have all these, uh, let's say, field devices which become more and more smarter and can give uh, additional information. And uh, this is where, uh, let's say, it, uh, it's necessary that these treasures, I would call them, really uh, are now grabbed and uh, brought to, uh, to the same level as all the other data. And uh, with this OPC UA FX, this is uh, the extensions of the existing OPC UA framework. This is exactly where the OPC Foundation and uh, its members, so we all, uh, we write the specifications and we enlarge these OPC UA uh, capabilities to exactly also access to these data structures. And if we have this, that we can only also use now the uh, smart sensors or the devices um, for offline engineering and also for simulation, because that is also one of the uh, big advantages uh, which OPC UA is offering. I heard now often the word, even this morning, how important uh, standardization uh, is in these circumstances um, of like enabling seamless uh, uh, communication between fields, so sensor level and the cloud. Um, Bernd, you work in various standardization committees. Um, how important is this point of standardization, which we, Joachim and I, know this quite well. Um, um, uh, the standardization says that an M12 is circular, yeah? And furthermore, for sure, but this is what is our daily work. Um, how important is uh, this work there, particular uh, when it comes to OPC um, UA, to have standards in communication, let's say? Yeah, as mentioned, there are a lot of groups outside there in different initiatives which work on standardization and not only for OPC UA, just for this asset administration shell and the digital twin idea to have a fully, yeah, fully data source over a life cycle. So this is just a very huge topic. But I think for OPC Foundation, this is just a very strong community where uh, a major, major part of all the global players are just involved. And I think it's just uh, important to point out that there are a lot of things to be standardized, that a plug fits, as you said, and that we use the features and especially OPC UA provides a lot of features in a standardized way, for example, to establish pub-sub connections between devices in one way everybody can follow. And this is just a part where FLC with FX does this modeling and there is just more modeling inside in the FX. But very important is also that in the OPC UA companion specifications where the semantics are defined, uh, there is a lot of work at the OPC Foundation, especially for harmonization of topics which all OPC UA users should use in the same manner. And there is the standardization at the VDMA where we say, okay, there we want to uh, show the common things of our machines in a standardized way in all of our machines on devices in the market. And so, yeah, there is <laughs> yeah, much motion inside there and it's just nice to see 
that all these people from different companies, which before have their own protocols and technologies they push in the market, now work together mm. and try to bring this new standard because we know it's just a better solution which can bring us much more effort than the yeah different protocols and the different technologies and not to use such a powerful toolbox of OPC UA. And this is just a standardization. It's very interesting, but a long-term aspect. And as you mentioned, the, key, the, the connectors and the semantics and the features, everything must be standardized and must, f f must fit together. Great, thank you. Thank you for those insights. Any uh, any additions? So feel free. I just saw a hand. <clears throat> maybe maybe one comment from my side. If you look on the on the process data of a sensor, I think in the current field buses uh, we have it uh, specified. But now for metadata of a sensor, and uh, of course a sensor produces much more data than the data which is necessary for the the PLC, especially for AI solutions for digital services. And therefore, we need, of course, a good standardization to make the engineering and also the development of the sensors uh, much uh, more efficient. I think this, um, this is really essential for getting data in a high quality because they are in a, in a semantic way, proper defined. And for us as a sensor, supplier it also reduces the development costs uh, if you if you look on our on our product portfolio today we have to we have to support different field buses from from different uh, for different um, machines and if we have this this mixed world also in the iot world as a standard as, as different standards it's uh, it, it really is um, brings the development costs to a, to a level which makes the, the added value lower for the customer because, of course, uh, the price is too high. So therefore, it's really essential for metadata that we have a proper standardization. And of course, I agree to Ben that OPC UA is uh, really a good technology for, for these solutions. And of course, the addition of uh, FLC. So thank you, thank you, Manfred. So it looks uh, for me that there are many, many playgrounds open right now, and um, on all those playgrounds, some work needs to be done and needs to be standardized, and those those wheels have to 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 be put together to a one then working machine at the end. So this is really really interesting. In in this manner, um, um, Elmar, I would like to ask you from a BNR um, standpoint. You are um, an, a specialist, uh, particular for drive and motion technology, which is coming more more important than uh, uh, in a higher level of automation. And your applications are high performance applications, and and the determinism yeah. in there plays a major role. Um, how should this be solved then at the end with OPC UI, or is it or UA, or is it solved by OPC UI? Um, and kind of Ethernet protocol. How so? How does this application fit into the uh, described world of OPC UA? Kilian, uh, first of all, uh, I, I cannot avoid. Maybe I will take some buzzwords in my next uh, sentences. Um, the thing is, what we are all working on, and especially, of course, if we have these uh, super high-speed and complex, very precise applications in conjunction with motion then we need uh, a determinism, of course. And here, I think most of the audience uh, listeners already heard about uh, time-sensitive networking, abbreviated uh, TSN. And uh, besides bandwidth, the TSN technology makes standard Ethernet basically deterministic and allows also different types of, uh, of traffic on one network, on one single cable. So, for example, control data, which is between a PLC and a motion device, is happening at the same time parallel with standard is a TCP IP traffic. And of course, with the prioritization of the urgent traffic. But this is not enough. 
because uh, TSN is a technology by itself and OPCUA as well. And the specific requirements of the field level, such as motion, functional safety, device profiles, sensor technology, still have to be taken into account. Yeah. And that's why, for example, two very important organizations for standardization, which is the IEC and also the IEEE, are jointly specifying the possible applications which can be done with TSN profiles for industrial automation use cases. And this is exactly where OPC UA FX or the FLC, the Field Level Communications Initiative, is, is built on. So we use uh, this fantastic situation that we can have a symbiotic work together of TSN technology together with OPC UA to make something better out of it. So one plus one is not two, maybe it's five or six even. And this is something we are using in our upcoming uh, products. Let it be motion or let it be remote IOs, vision, etc., to implement the capability to follow exactly these upcoming uh, or uh, uh, additional specifications. And uh, that is uh, absolutely what we are following. So we will have, uh, on the one hand, uh, the existing uh, PowerLink technology, but also our customers uh, can have an option, can have a choice uh, for new projects, for new uh, generations to use all these uh, capabilities which lie within this uh, OPC UA FX technology. And um, yeah, I'm very happy uh, to, to be part of these uh, uh, evolutionary steps. And uh, yeah, we are on a very good way. And um, yeah, that is what I can, what I can uh, post uh, to you all outside that this is really or could really be a game changer for the industry. Great, Elmar. And before we come to the next question, just like an internal hint for our technic just behind the wall, our pre-screen monitors just switched out in power safe modus by themselves. Perhaps you can, you can switch them on again. But uh, nevertheless, we will, we will uh, just proceed. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elmar. Um, and then we just learned now, besides standards, it's like sensors, sensors, sensors. Yeah? We need sensors everywhere. We need good sensors everywhere. So Manfred, perfect uh, to have you with us. Uh, Zig is one of those market leaders for industrial sensors. Um, and now the question is, with OPC UA over TSN, your sensors will be connected um, um, again to a powerful Ethernet network. And um, what new opportunities or also challenges and work to be done is this bringing uh, to, to, to what you are doing to bring the best sensors in industry to the market? Yeah, that's a really good question. So if you look at our intelligent sensors, uh, of course they have uh, more and more computing power inside. And so you can really use the sensor itself as a part of your complete application solution. For instance, we have also uh, machine learning algorithms inside the sensor and uh, of course this uh, could be really a, a puzzle of the complete uh, solution of a, of a machine but uh, nevertheless if we want to bring all sensors in in this ethernet uh, environment and uh, bring the data easily to the to the iot world i think uh, this needs also a uh, proper solution, hardware solution for the devices itself. So uh, if you think about our pretty small sensors uh, and uh, we need, for instance, uh, Ethernet uh, connector plus a power supply connector, this is um, from the cost perspective uh, really high and not attractive for us to, to uh, bring such devices on the market. And therefore, of course, we also need the technology, a new technology step or push that we can bring also small sensors, compact sensors, price sensitive sensors also in this IoT world. And of course, also if we say the sensor, the smart sensor, the intelligent sensor is a part of the automation solution, 
we need also a kind of seamless engineering, like uh, virtual commissioning, like this, uh, the, all these new world or new uh, features which are coming into the market. And therefore, of course, OPC UA, TSN brings really this added value that we have the chance to be as a component supplier, of course, sensor are key component, but uh, anyhow, the components to bring this seamless into the complete automation world. I think this is very, very important for us. Joachim, I think connecting sensors in the field with like lowering the cost as far as possible, this is something you have in mind, I guess. Exactly, and Manfred, I think you remember in November when we sat together in a meeting, we had, um, we had some, some of those thick um, Ethernet sensors existing today, had a look on, and it was obvious that uh, we had always two connectors at that sensor, for one for power, one for data, and the, the width of the small and um, hopefully cheap sensor um, was determined by the connectivity itself. And I guess that the connectivity itself has also an essential part of the costs. And if we now think about to connect a lot of more sensors to the Ethernet network just to get the right data and make use of it, yeah? Um, and not only vision cameras who maybe today need the, the high data rates, um, then this is also for sure a cost issue. And um, also here we need new technologies. And as we discussed two, two months ago, um, Manfred, so single pair Ethernet is the perfect, the perfect solution. It is a new physical layer for, uh, for Ethernet transmission, yeah, for copper-based cabling, um, the two-wire Ethernet um, to really, in a cost-efficient and sustainable way, um, connect all the different sensors and maybe um, Elma even, even auch drives to the, to the Ethernet network. And um, also here, standardization plays a very big role. It's like for the, for the protocol, um, Bernd, Bernd explained for OPC UA, um, so also for the hardware, um, devices of many different uh, manufacturers have to be connected in a standardized way. Um, this is why, why international cabling standards for single pair Ethernet are also very essential. And um, those standards are set in place. Um, and we as a hardware company um, provide connectivity in order to enable companies like ZIG, like KUKA, like BNR um, to make use of that cost-efficient two-wire Ethernet cabling. Joachim, okay. maybe I, I, can, I can add here one comment. Uh, I can hardly uh, remember one BNR component which is not equipped with, with at least one or two uh, Ethernet connectors. So, of course, we are also very interested to lower the costs uh, and to have uh, uh, a very reliable and uh, sustainable solution for the future. So, Joachim, you say also from a connectivity standpoint, the work on standardization is so, so important so that it, it fits into also the standardization work uh, Bernd was mentioning. Could you, could you tell us a little bit more about, from a Hartig perspective, um, how important standards are? And um, we, I guess we are all committed to those standards and working hard on it. Yeah, so we, we as Harting, we take um, standards very important, um, as I mentioned. So for Ethernet, single pair Ethernet, we have different standards. One is, of course, the connector interface. Um, there was already um, um, a, a vote by the international cabling standards of the IEC. Um, ISO IEC and the TIA. Um, they have checked and compared all the different proposals for connectors and at the end of the day decided for the IEC 61371-6. Uh, and um, yeah, this is uh, the connector interface Harting is following and all the big, I would say, other connector manufacturers are following like, like Molex, like, um, like uh, Tyco, um, like Amphenol. And so standards are very important, yeah. Great. So, for me now, this sounds all great, let's say. And what we learned is that a lot of steps were already done. Yeah? Parts of the steps are like a decade or even more already uh, uh, in the past. Others um, are going to be done. The way is long. We achieved a lot. And there's a lot of motion in, in, in what's going on. I would like to, to make the picture a little bit more clear for, for, for our audience is to like, uh, like to ask uh, each of you, what are exactly now the next steps as concrete as you can uh, mention it? What are the next steps, uh, the next challenges, or also the next successes which you can see on the horizon? So what is going to happen in the, in the next shorter time frame 
um, which then also will be imported to be communicated uh, to the people that are interested. And so if you want, um, Manfred, you, you probably can start. Yeah, I think <clears throat> with OPCOA and uh, companion specs, we already launched one product, our, our RFID sensor, um, which now provides OPCOA in combination with the companion spec. And this is the, our very first step. And uh, we also have some uh, devices which uh, have OPCOA on board. But of course, for the, for the bunch of, of, of all sensors, it's of course a long, a long way. It's, we are not at the end. It's, it's really the start of this, of this journey with Ethernet. And of course, I'm pretty sure with the technology of SPE in combination with OPC UA, this will be really a booster. And to be honest, in all new product developments of, of the new sensor uh, families, we are, we are really thinking hard about how can we support exactly these technologies uh, that they are available when we launch the new product uh, generations. I think this is definitely the way which SIG uh, aims for. And, and of course, I'm, I'm really happy that all, all this discussion are really also boosters that we say, okay, standardization is really one of the essential key factors to bring this uh, sensor technology and the data of the sensors to a next level. Great, thank you. So there was a keyword standardization. So Bernd, what are your next steps, next challenges? What can we look for? Yeah, I think it must be understood that there is not only one step to go if we want to achieve an industrial revolution all are talking about in, <laughs> since six or eight years now. So for me, the whole approach is like a big puzzle and each piece must be defined in a way that it all shows up together the great picture our customers need because it's uh, in the context of OPC UA, it's very nice to see that just the last one or two years, more and more have defined OPC UA as the interface in our devices or machines. I think this is just the way factory automation and process automation will go. And this is just a very good step because all work together. But this is just only when the machine is connected and we've got in the life cycle of the machines just other steps like the engineering before and the commissioning and so on. And we want to speed up this for the customers because time to market for machines is very important. And so just currently my discussion is to bring together this digital twin, this asset administration shell uh, with a southbound interface, I call it, to connect to OPC UA server in machines and devices to enhance models in this asset administration shell with needed data there. So for me, it's just not the idea that this digital twin is the, the <laughs> Datenkrake, sorry, the data octopus, which, which collects all the data. It's all, it's all important to think about where is the right place for the right data because data consumes, consumes energy as well when I send it around or store it. So we must think in this way also. And yeah, this is just my, my current <laughs> discussion I have. And I think it's just hard to say when this will end. I think it's just... Uh, mid-term approach. We know how long technologies like Profibus are sold and Profinet is available since 18 years. So it's just a long way to go, but I think we prepared the path and we prototype in the definition of the standards to make, yeah, uh, make a validation if this can yeah, function, what we all define there. So it's a very, very interesting topic. And I can only invite the people from companies which are interested to, to 
to join this OPC foundation ecosystem, which is just built up for FX as well, because we and a lot of other players in the market think this is just our future. Great, thank you. So, Elmar, your view from behind the scenes, what can we expect? What are, what is dominating your working days uh, during the next months? Yes. So, first of all, what is left for me to say? Because uh, both Manfred and Bernd, I think they, they put the, the right uh, arguments. But I will start maybe with the, the credo or the motto of uh, the OPC Foundation. And this is one harmonized solution for process and factory scaling from sensor to cloud. What does it mean? At the end, I think our, why we are together, why we are in this foundation uh, is to work on very easy concepts that makes our customer life easier. And the customer can be a machine builder, but with this, let's say, digitalization, with this supply chain uh, going from, from, from left to right, from, from up to down and so on, I think this is exactly uh, what we are working on to make life easier and to concentrate, let's say, on applications, on new applications, which can be done on the base of this new technology. We've heard a lot, and I think we cannot avoid uh, these buzzwords uh, everyone hears when he sees a presentation or is discussing that is OPC UA, TSN, that is FLC, that is FX, and so on and so on. But uh, to condense it, I think uh, we see that uh, <clears throat> there is real co-opetition in the market. And this is lived within all the working groups of the OPC Foundation. And also today, yeah, we are sitting around, we have a connection, suppl a connection uh, manufacturer, supplier, we have a, a robot manufacturer, we have a sensor company and we are on the market partly also competitors, but at the same time in other projects, we are partnering and so on. And I think this is exactly what the industry now needs to simplify it and to really bring it to one standard, which of course will never be ready because software will never end, but it will in the next years, it will allow you to really set up to really make this true, what Industry 4.0 uh, is promising that you have really a plug and play or plug and produce technology, which is lowering uh, the engineering part, the engineering time is lowering uh, the commissioning time and also during the operation makes life easier for the maintenance guys and so on. So that is exactly why we are sitting here and I'm really appreciate very much that we have such kind of discussions uh, today uh, on the Harting uh, stage. Great, thank you, Elmar. And then, Joachim, what's from a connectivity standpoint? Elmar just mentioned plug and play machines. As long machines are plug and play, uh, seems to be a connector uh, part of the story, which, which makes us very happy. So give us your view behind the scenes. Yeah, what, what, we can, what we can do is we could um, create some transparency on single pay Ethernet, yeah, um, to enable customers to understand what is available in terms of chipsets, in terms of magnetics, in terms of cable and connectivity, um, in order to, yeah, create transparency to inform customers and even to um, inform them how to device or design, design an Ethernet device. This is our mission. For this we have found it, um, because this task is very big, so we have founded um, approximately two and a half years ago the SPE um, Industrial Partner Network is a strong network of many different companies coming from the switching technology market, from connectivity, from cabling, from automation market. And we all, let's say, work together in, in technical working groups and, and try to create use cases and to spread the technology into the world. And, and just to double check, because in the beginning I, I, had a, had a, I mentioned the wrong standard, so it's the 61. Um, 63171-6, which all those, those manufacturers are committing to in order to have a clear um, standardization for, for a single pay Ethernet cabling and connectivity. Great, perfect. Thank you, Joachim. And now, so I really like uh, to hear from more or less all of you and also from Theo Steininger early that 
co-creation, co-engineering is needed, that we need collaboration, standards, platforms working together. And I, not only in the industry, but I like the idea that one plus, uh, plus one is not two, but three minimum. I really like this, this, this idea. And as we are part of those um, discussions uh, quite often, quite deeply, um, I would also like uh, in, a sh in a short manner to ask you if you have like insider tips for the people that are listening right now. Follow those people on LinkedIn, beside you for sure. Yeah, this is clear. Those pages, so those web pages are interesting. Those committees um, are interested uh, that you have a look in there uh, to commonly uh, uh, create this future of, of the uh, industrial transformation. Um, as I heard some invitations already in the statements um, of all four of you, um, please, in a, in, a, in a short way, if you have, um, some insights, like go there and um, and um, show the people where they can get information or be even part of this uh, uh, tremendous journey in the future. Manfred, if you would like to start. Yeah, I think um, this uh, Industrial Digital Twin Association is, is a very important uh, um, anchor point for, for standardization and, of course, the OPC UA uh, committees and uh, from that point of view I have nothing to add uh, to your comments of course uh, I think uh, th there are many many uh, discussions going on but I think the awareness that we need the standardization is for me the most important uh, topic that everybody knows without standardization without a plug and play and easy engineering we we, we really lose grip on the on the ground Bernd, any hot tips? Follow these people to uh, learn more. So just there is in preparation a VDMA newsletter about OPC UA. They call it the global production language. So maybe I can provide uh, contact information to, uh, to, to sign on this new newsletter. And if you are interested in deterministic use of OPC UA with TSN like FX does. There is just a newsletter. It's just from end of last year. Uh, not a newsletter, sorry, a white paper. And I think we can prepare the link as well, which has a slightly deeper look inside. I think just uh, to, to look at the OPC Foundation homepage, it's just interesting and think about maybe to join there or have a look what's going on there. Yeah, I think and the IDTA just for the topics of the digital twin as, uh, as, the, as an administration shell for lifecycle information is just very interesting as well. Great. Elma, your hints. No, I think uh, if uh, machine builders or uh, end users are in discussion about their strategy for the next years, I think uh, they should really uh, not only uh, bring it to the table, but also stress the topic of interoperability. And um, if uh, someone is now shaping uh, the future of, of his machine or his uh, uh, assembly line or, or even plant, uh, I think it's mandatory really to discuss if it the right time already to discuss or to introduce already the first parts uh, which are available and there is uh, already uh, uh, something available. So, for example, uh, the OPC Foundation um, <clears throat> wanted to show on the SPS fair in Nuremberg, which was cancelled, uh, a, a big a multi-vendor demo. And this multi-vendor demo <clears throat> uh, can be uh, can be visited uh, virtually, and will be brought to to the next uh, fairs around the world. And here you can really see that uh, this is not just theory, but in praxis you will see that uh, more than uh, <clears throat> I think 17 or 18 controllers of all the well-known automation suppliers work together on one network and exchange data. Uh, under the specification of OPC UA FX technology, starting with the 
I think also very important uh, use case, machine to machine or controller to controller. So um, things already happened. Uh, the next steps are, uh, let's say, in progress. And uh, yeah, you should really tr now discuss it with, with your suppliers and uh, bring it maybe to the next step of uh, technology, like uh, Manfred mentioned, the yeah? new step of uh, having data uh, for more um, added value in, in, in all kind of uh, the supply, supply chain, the whole. So this is maybe my hint, stay curious. Great, this sounds really, really interesting and a lot of good topics raising. Joachim, your hints, where, what we shouldn't miss in, in the next month. Yeah, I try to be a little bit more, more um, short with regards to the time. So I have two hints, two clues. Um, one is, as just Emma also said, so pay attention for use cases wherever you see them, maybe on the SBS, by the OPC UA, um, or by the field level initiative, um, but also by different companies, whenever you see use cases, because this is a way how new technologies start with first use cases. And second one, invitation for tomorrow. So if you are interested in single pay Ethernet on tomorrow, um, we have a talk together with a chip manufacturer, analog devices, um, company Wirt for magnetics, um, in order to check where the technology stands and um, how to devise the design and um, design a device and, and which components are available or not. So join us on tomorrow is my hint. Perfect, Joachim. This, this perfect uh, bridges me to the big thank you. First of all, uh, thank you, Elma, Bernd, Manfred, and also Joachim for joining us here, spending your time. And um, I would like to connect this with um, one further hint um, uh, I would like to give, because if you would like to hear and see more of those four guys here, I can really recommend to Google IoT use case, um, because you, there you will probably find a video where, where um, those guys um, also are exchanging uh, information. And this could be really uh, interesting for you um, and to get additional information then. But now, personally, really um, particular, Elmar, Bernd, Manfred, thank you for joining us here and uh, talk to you soon. Uh, stay well, stay healthy, and i really looking forward to have a beer when time are different with all three of you. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Bye. And then... Bye. Joachim already mentioned it, um, that was really like fast. It was totally exciting to me, Joachim, I have to say. I enjoyed it um, really much um, because that was our streaming of the first day of uh, the Industrial Ethernet Week 2022. And the invitation is there to join us tomorrow, um, tomorrow at 9.30 um, again, where we will talk about more about SBE. And like Joachim mentioned already, um, we will show you with further partners how today, not tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, but today it is possible to design an SPE device and what kind of other nice innovations we are able to provide here to make all this happen to your device and at the end of the day to the end application, what we heard um, um, about by today. Um, so. Like I started, um, we are digital here, but all channels are open. Um, we will take care about all the questions, um, all the feedback. Um, it was great that you were with us today. And uh, thank you very much for your time. And see you 9.30 German time tomorrow for day two of Industrial Ethernet Week 22. Bye-bye. <laughs>